Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, today's video is going to be about ME, CFS uh, news, updates, studies, things that I, I think are important to share for people to know, exciting things that are going on. Um, there are people working on our behalf, there are people researching on our behalf, and things are happening. And I just want people to know, people that might be severely ill at home a lot, or really people that just might not know about this, even if you're not severely ill. Um, there is a lot going on, and uh, I'm just going to share a few things here. I'm going to jump right in. It's going to be short and sweet, but these are uh, exciting in my opinion, and I, and I hope that you guys um, can see that there are positive things happening here in a, in a time where there isn't a lot of positive news. So the Open Medicine Foundation um, funded a study that was designed to validate the increase of autoantibodies observed in the blood of people with ME-CFS. Uh, the autoantibodies are... Uh, immune proteins that mistakenly target and react with a person's own cell structure. The increased autoantibodies observed previously in the blood of people with ME-CFS appear to be targeting signaling molecules uh, that, surface, uh, that are on the surface of cells that are responsible for regulating energy, metabolism, immune system activation, muscle activity, heart muscle activity, and neurocognitive function. So uh, this is exciting and the findings say that although there was no significant correlation between autoantibody levels and severity of disease, uh, they found and concluded that subsequent treatments to remove these autoantibodies uh, improved ME-CFS symptoms in a subset of patients. So although it only improved symptoms of a subset of patients, I think that's still great news. Any help for anyone with ME and CFS is great, even if it's not you know, a blanketed treatment for everybody, for numerous reasons. We wanna see anyone improve symptoms. And also that's, that's a building block for future treatment for people that are uh, uh, more severe. So anything you can build on, um, I think is great. They'll probably go from here and, and say, hey, why is this only working for a subset? How do we get this to work for more people? Why is this only working for this group? And it just raises more and more questions, more and more studies. and and can validate more and more uh, funding for studies. I think that is very, very important. So that's one exciting thing that's going on. Um, and I'll, I'm gonna link all these in the, in the description so you can research a little bit more. So uh, the Solve ME-CFS uh, initiative um, is helping sponsor some legislation um, called HR 7057. And when passed, this legislation will bolster MECFS research at the uh, National Institute of Health by including an additional $60 million for existing MECFS research projects and expanding into connections between MECFS and COVID survivors. It will also enable existing public education programs to include MECFS and post viral diseases information with focus on early diagnosis. So I think this is extremely important for numerous reasons. Uh, there are a lot of people with COVID that seem to be developing ME-CFS, and I think it's important to find the correlation there. That'll lead to more studies as well, more attention as well, and those long COVID haulers you know, need the help. And also early diagnosis uh, is extremely important in my opinion because any type of diagnosis uh, for ME-CFS is helpful, and especially if it's early and you can start any type of treatment or at least starting to manage your illness early, um, I think that's extremely important. Um, so these are two very important things here that I think um, will really benefit uh, ME-CFS uh, sufferers and they're very positive steps in the right direction. So I, I hope that this brings a little bit of positivity to a, a very negative time with a very difficult illness. Um, I'd also like to throw in one last thing before I wrap up here. Uh, Ed Markey uh, is a senator uh, in the US and he's been kind of championing ME-CFS as far as legislation is concerned and awareness. So if you can have a family member or if you're up to it, write a letter, let him know how important it is for us to have an advocate uh, in the Senate um, uh, regarding ME-CFS and uh, let him know your story, let him know how serious it's been, contact local representation in your area, let them know that you appreciate uh, Ed Markey and that you wanna see more people do what he's doing and let them know your story. The more advocates we get, the better it's going to be for research, the better it is it's going to be for awareness, and I think it's extremely vital to do that. Um, so those are just a few things. Um, I know they're not you know, ground-breaking, uh, ground-shaking developments, but I just want people to know that things are going in the right direction. People are fighting to secure $60 million of funding. People are 
um, uh, doing research, seeing how they can improve symptoms, even if it's in a subset of, of, of patients and, and finding MECFS biomarkers and blood work and things like that. So the Open Medicine Foundation is doing a lot. I, I, I recommend you check them out and if you can donate to them because they really are fighting on our behalf. Uh, Dr. Ron Davis uh, is associated with them and his son has severe, um, very severe ME. Uh, CFS and he's trying to find a cure to help his son and to help the rest of us so the more and more we could help them not only with awareness spreading the word but with funding um, I, I think it, it helps us all a lot so until next time when I see more uh, information that I think is important to our, our community I'll share it with you guys um, please if you want to see more content on ME CFS like subscribe um, I'm gonna keep doing as many videos as I can uh, to keep you guys informed and just to talk about ME, CFS, everything there is that, that uh, entails life with ME and CFS. I think it's a, a story that's not told enough. So I'm going to keep doing it until more and more people realize that this is a very, very serious illness that needs more eyes and attention and funding and more empathy. So I'm, I'm going to do my best to keep doing that. Um, everybody out there, I hope that you're staying safe and I hope that you're well. Uh, take care.